What's up? So today's video, if I do say so myself, is gonna be pretty awesome because as you can see, I have purchased a 120 millimeter radiator. So this is the EK uh, SE 120. So it's the thin boy 120 millimeter radiator. And I'm currently running the A12X25 on IDA 64 to kind of give it a benchmark of how it performs on this radiator because Normally when I make fan videos, you guys give me a lot of awesome comments or advice or things I should try next time around and they're always awesome. Thank you guys for that. And we're gonna keep doing you know, that kind of content where you guys tell me what I, what I should try to design next time around to try to eventually beat the A12X25, be it if we ever do or not. But then I got a tweet from Need Design who sent me a render of three fans that he made and they were pretty, pretty freaking sweet. This, the render was done really well. And that got me thinking instead of you guys just telling me what you want me to do, like you want, instead of just saying, you know, design this or that or the other, I thought, why not let you guys do the design work? Cause it's obvious you guys can do it. And then just send me the models and I'll print them out and we'll test them. And we'll see who out there is really the best uh, designer of fans. And if anybody can beat the A12X25, you will be a legend. So that is the idea of this whole new series. This is gonna be episode one, the pilot, I guess you could say. So the pilot's never that good. So don't, don't judge their series on this video. But that is the idea. And initially I was like, you guys just uh, do your models, upload them to Thingiverse and tweet at me the link. And then I very quickly realized that is a bad idea because I lose them in the Twitter universe. So instead I set up a Gmail account, found fanshowdown at gmail.com where you guys can send me your models and then I can have them all in one spot and I can go in there and pick and choose which ones to, to feature. Now I won't be able to do everybody's on one video because let's be honest, it takes a while to print stuff. I could probably do three, four, five of them. We can test them out and then we'll have uh, a stockpile of other fans to try in future videos like that. And I'm gonna keep like a spreadsheet. So we're gonna have like a leaderboard, a leader, a leaderboard. So think like uh, Top Gear's test track where they had all those cars and the, the best ones went to the top. So we're gonna keep a leaderboard of the fan we're testing and who made it. And we're gonna plug it into the leaderboard and see who stays on top and who's as closest to this guy. So we can keep, a, keep an eye out for who the best is out there. In order to have everybody making good designs that fit on my test bench, the A12X25, I'm currently printing a new fan in the back here that's gonna give you guys, uh, we're gonna basically test it for fitment. Outside disc diameter and the hub diameter are very, uh, very, very important key geometry points for designing a fan. If you make the fan too big, obviously it doesn't fit. Uh, with a 3D printer, everything's not as perfect as it would be in a real fan. So 110 on the fan disc is probably where you should be. That's where that one's gonna be set at. And then the hub, the hub geometry to the backside of the fan is very important to make sure it fits. So if this fan fits how I want it to, I'm going to upload a brand new model that's just the hub to my Thingiverse account, along with a drawing so you guys can go in there and look at it so you know exactly the size of the hub to make on your fan design so that when you send me the model, it works. Also, when you send me the model, make sure you send me at least an STL file so I can print it out. If you can send me like a step model or a SOLIDWORKS model, that'd be great. In case there's an issue, I can go in there and modify it. I guess with a step model, I can still work around that to modify that. But if you can't, just an STL model and make sure you follow the key points of the geometry to the T and you'll be good to go. And to start this whole deal out, I have taken one of those renders that Need Design has sent me. This is his uh, centripetal uh, centrifugal, whatever. I think it's centripetal compressor. So this is essentially, if you look at the top here, it's like a little fan, which is awesome in and of itself. And then you can see that there's my Twitter tag, there's his Twitter tag, and on the backside, those fan blades funnel into compressor veins. And it's just awesome, other than the fact that my, my printer's support was not the greatest, but it came out decent. And it, it did fit on the hub. I did have to do some uh, wiggle, or I did have to do some, uh, some tweaking with the old, the old grinder, the, like a little bit of sanding on the inside. I got it to fit. Do I, I haven't tested it yet though, but do, do you think this is gonna do any good? I don't know, but it does look awesome. I'm gonna give it a, probably a one for performance, but a 10 for design. And then I decided to print out one of my goofy fans that I haven't shown on the channel yet. So this is essentially a two-part fan. You got on the outside here, you have like a 31 blades that are kind of similar to what you would see. The idea here is like a compressor section of a turbine engine. And on the inside, you got more of a standard fan layout where you got nine blades curved forward like you'd see on like a Noctua or something like that. So this two-piece fan versus this compressor fan versus a real fan. What do you, what do you think is gonna be the best? If I was to guess, although this one looks the sweetest, it's gonna do the worst. Uh, I'll do better than that one, but I'm still gonna lose this guy but it'll be sweet. 
I got a phone call. Two minutes. Two minutes till this thing's done and we can start on these two guys to see where everybody finishes out. And the printer's almost done. We're at 93%. And then we'll have that thing to know if everything fits up good and we'll have a good base model for all you guys to get designing. Now I know a lot of people, so at least a lot of people told me when I was looking at printers, never get a Delta as your first printer because they're just, it's just you're gonna run into problems. And I don't know if that applies anymore because honestly, I guess it did. It probably did back when printers were a little more less dialed in now. But this thing has been money. Like if I would have got this thing as my first printer, I don't think I would ever have ever had a bad time like I did with the TiVo with especially like the filament grinding and prints not sticking and all that other nonsense I ran into. But this thing has literally been a machine. Just perfect. I've had literally no problems with it. I haven't used it as much as the TiVo, so take that with a grain of salt. But it, it makes fans exceptionally well it's quieter than the TiVo things always stick to it which is awesome by itself and I've never ground or had any filament strip which is I love and the biggest the biggest thing I've noticed though is like for this when I when you when you slice something out you get like a an estimate of how long it's going to take to print and every single time I got an estimate and print on the TiVo the TiVo was longer but every single time I've printed on the FL Sun Q5 it has been shorter. I think the estimated time for this print was like six hours and 30 minutes, if I remember right, or six something. And it finished in about five hours and 20 minutes. So it's still a long time, but below what was uh, estimated. And I'm sure if this was printed on the TiVo, one, it probably wouldn't have stuck because this yellow PLA never sticks on the TiVo. And two, it probably would have finished in like seven hours. So if you like Deltas, which I do, I think they look awesome. The Q5 is like literally a good pick in my book. I'm sure I'll have a more in-depth review in the future but I'm liking it also my Prusa shipped today so I guess we'll compare that to this thing when it shows up I assume the Prusa will be better but who knows hey the printer's done perfect timing so the Noctua A12X25 the gold standard that you're all uh, actually trying to beat other than trying to beat myself finished with a delta of 58.4 average temperature 83.5 there's there's where your uh, baseline lays or sits or is now we're gonna see if Mr. Knee Design can do anything similar with uh, that guy. Let's see how she fits. Well, I know she fits on the hub now. Oh yeah. Beautiful, look at that guy. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's uh, see how, actually let's just hold it and see if it moves any air at all. And we'll listen to it, see how loud it is. It's not really that loud. It's balanced pretty well. Ooh, it's got a lot of mass to it. You can feel it when you try to rotate it. I mean, there's air coming out. There is air being moved by the fan, so that is a plus. Is it enough to keep the CPU cool? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. Yee! Well, uh, that went just about as well as we expected. We are throttling right now, so we have hit the thermal limit of the 7700K. So this one, although it did score 10 out of 10 for design outside the box, it wasn't that loud. Its performance is not good. We are, we are maxed out right now, 101 on the package. So this is not gonna work, but A plus we're trying. So now we're gonna try this guy. The, uh, the two in one that I made for fun uh, came out pretty clean. So here we go, we'll put this thing on here, see if it does better than, well, a DNF. Let's see how loud it is. Definitely louder than the uh, compressor fan. But we'll see how it does cooling wise, so we'll be back in a minute. The run is complete and the two-in-one fan actually didn't do too bad. We got a maximum 95, average 85.3, pretty close to the A12X25. Now the most important part, the part you guys really need, is this fan. The uh, the fan that I just drew up a little bit ago, 11 blades. The only thing different about this one is this is a standard 11 blade fan, but I do have these little winglets that face downwards They're to, to, to try to act like scoops, I guess you'd say. But more importantly, the fan fits within the housing great. It fits around the hub perfectly. So uh, we'll run it just for fun, and then I'll make sure you guys know where to pick this thing up so when you want to do your designs, this is a good starting point for you to either grab the hub from 
or just look at the design. But eh, the most important thing is just look at the dimensions and make sure you hit those on your design regardless of what it is. I mark the critical dimensions with an asterisk. So you make sure you have those. Everything else is just kind of up to you. So let's run it, see what it does, and we'll check out the leaderboard before we head off. And we're done. So we've ran this fan through the same test just for fun, I guess. But while this test was running, I did take this model and the hub and everything like that, upload it to my Thingiverse account. So now this fan is on there. The hub's on there. Dimensions are on there. So everything you need to uh, make your own fan design to submit it to my email account to uh, get yourself on the next round or the next episode of this little series to see who's the best. And this is what the uh, the leaderboard looks looks like as of now. Obviously the A12X25 is number one. The fan I have here, the little the, the one with scoops, second, followed by the two and one, and then uh, Need to Sign is rounding out the bottom with his awesome looking design, but poorly, poorly performing design. But I think that was more for the memes rather than the performance. But if you'd like to be involved in the next video, make sure you go to my Thingiverse account, look at the dimensions, uh, the requirements for the dimensions of the fan to make sure it fits, get a design going, and send it to me. Either go for max performance or uh, awesome looks and performance if it's possible. And if we get a bunch of fans that look like they're doing exactly the same, it's going to come down to which one cools the quietest. Or maybe we'll do nor noise normalized cooling if we start getting a bunch of them uh, stacking up, which is probably what we'll, we'll, we'll need to do, I imagine. But it's going to be fun either way. And literally, I'll see you in the next video.